Hi, my name is Camille Stauffer, and I'm here to show you how to assemble Micromotion cable glands. If you're not using Micromotion cable glands, be sure to closely follow the instructions provided by the gland manufacturer. However, you should be able to follow this video for reference and comparison even if you aren't using Micromotion glands. When assembling cable glands for Micromotion devices, you must use either shielded cable or armored cable with a cable gland. Unshielded cable has to be run inside a shielded conduit. Shielded cable is surrounded by a foil shield, and armored cable is surrounded by a braid. In either case, the important thing to remember is that the foil or the braid should be terminated inside the gland and not inside the wiring compartment. For the purpose of this video, we're going to assume the transmitter housing cover is off so that you have access to the wiring terminals that you're working with. Micromotion devices have different size conduit openings, so it's important to match the right cable gland to the right conduit opening. The 9-wire cable between a junction box and a 9-wire transmitter uses a 3 quarter inch gland. 4-wire cable uses a half inch or M20 gland. Some installations may include multiple types of glands, and the different size glands have different parts, so it's important to know which is which. In this video, we will be working with a 4-wire cable gland for an M20 conduit opening. The 4-wire cable gland has the following parts. The gland body, which is threaded on both sides the gland insert which sits inside the gland body and may come as two parts, and the gland nut which secures the insert inside the body. The first thing to do is to screw the gland body into the conduit opening. You will want to tighten it to one turn past hand tight. Next slide the gland nut onto the cable, followed by the insert. Make sure the nut and insert are on the cable the right way. The nut has to be able to screw onto the gland body when everything is put together. The flared end of the insert should be facing the nut so that the insert fits snugly inside the nut. Next you will need to prepare the cable. In this video we are working with shielded cable, but if you are using armored cable you can continue to follow along. The process of preparing both types of cable is similar, however working with shielded cable requires some additional steps that we will show in this video. The first thing you need to do is strip the cable jacket back to expose the wires. Trimming it 4 to 5 inches is sufficient. You can remove the clear wrap and wire filler around the wires, but don't cut back the shield all the way. You will want to leave a bit less than an inch of this shielding behind. Now locate the drain wires and separate them from the rest of the wires. If you are using armored cable, at this point you will proceed to put the gland together and attach it to the device. With shielded cable, the next step is to apply a short piece of shielded heat shrink in order to make sure the drain wires are properly terminated inside the gland. Shielded heat shrink has about an inch of heat shrink tubing on one side and an inch of exposed shield on the other. Before attaching the heat shrink, wrap the drain wires around the exposed shield twice. Cut off any excess length of wire once you do this. To attach the heat shrink to the cable, slide the shielded heat shrink over the cable until the tubing completely covers the foil shield and the drain wires. If it doesn't completely cover the foil and drain wires, trim the foil back until it does. Carefully apply heat to shrink the tubing. 120 degrees Celsius or 250 degrees Fahrenheit for a few seconds should do it. Now you are ready to put the gland together and attach it to the device. To do this, slide the gland insert piece or pieces up to the beginning of the shield and then fold the shield back over the insert. Feed the wires through the conduit opening and push the insert all the way into the gland body. Bring up the gland nut and screw it down tightly. That's it! Now you can connect the individual wires to the appropriate terminals inside the wiring compartment. 